Hi, I am Akhilesh Kumar Shivasto. In the series of programming of a stack, today we will discuss about the conversion of the decimal number to the binary, octal, and hexadecimal numbers. I hope before watching this video, you already have gone through my previous videos on the programming of a stack, wherein we have discussed about how to write the code for push, pop, and stack top functions. So let's look at the algorithm for the conversion. Now suppose we have been given a number and let's say that number is 21. <clears throat> we have to convert this number to the binary. You must be knowing that 21 can be represented as 16 plus 4 plus 1. It means we can represent this in the form of binary as this 10101. Similarly, if I have a number, let's say 25. So this number can be represented as 16 plus 8 plus 1. Hence, its binary will be 11001. So if I have to convert this number 25 to the binary, the simple process says that you should keep this number dividing by to and take the modulus. For example, if I am taking this 25, let's divide this number with 2 and take the modulus. The modulus comes as 1 and the quotient comes as 2, 12. Divide this number again with 2, the modulus is 0 and the quotient is 6. You divide this number again by 2, the quotient comes as 3 and the remainder or the modulus is uh, zero and then you divide this number with two the remainder will be one and the quotient will also be one if we divide this number with one uh, divide this number with two the remainder will be one and the quotient will be zero so as soon as you get the number zero as a quotient then you print this number or read this number from bottom to top and this becomes the binary number so here you can say that 11001 is the binary equivalent of the given number. If you have to convert this using this stack, what you can do, every time you're finding the remainder, you keep it inside this stack or you push it on the stack. So one by one, whenever you are getting the remainder, push it on the stack. And once you are getting a quotient zero, you start printing this number by popping this and these elements one by one. So you first pop one and print one, and then you next pop one and print this one. Then you pop zero and print this zero. You pop zero and then print this zero. And finally you pop this one and print this one. Let's take another example to understand this process of the conversion. Let's say we have a number one, five, nine. So if you want to convert this number to the binary, it's divided by two. So I think, 79 will be the quotient and 1 will be the remainder. You should start storing the remainders in the stack. Then you divide it, this number with 2 again. And I think 39 should be the quotient and 1 will be remainder. Let's store this 1 in the stack. You divide this number once again with 2. So 19 will be the quotient and 1 will be remainder. Let's store this 1 in the stack. Divide this number with 2 again. So 9 will be the quotient and 1 will be remainder. Let's store this 1 in the stack. Divide this number with 2 again. 4 will be quotient and 1 will be remainder. Store this 1 again in the stack. You divide this number with 2. Quotient will be 2 and remainder will be 0. So store this remainder 0 in the stack. You divide this number with 2. 1 will be the quotient and 0 will be remainder. You store this remainder in the stack. And then you divide this number with 2. Quotient will be 0 and remainder will be 1. We are storing the last remainder in the stack because the quotient has become 0. The process has to stop. And then you pop these numbers one by one and print. So 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. This will be our binary equivalent. So the process is going to be very simple. I'm just writing a simple algorithm according to which we will be writing the code as well. So for 
doing so, let's say we have a decimal number D E C I M A L, and we are dividing this number by two by the time this number is greater than zero. You are finding a remainder, let's say R. So remainder R is equals to decimal modulus two. You have to push this remainder on the stack, and then you have to divide this number with two. So decimal is equals to decimal divided by two. So when the number becomes zero, you have to pop the elements one by one and print this number. So while not is empty, the stack you have to pop the element. Let's say you're calling the pop function and you are storing the return value in some variable x, and you are printing this value x. So every time you are popping the element and writing this element, and this is done by the time the stack is not empty. The moment stack becomes empty, every printed value or the sequence of the printed values will actually be the decimal equivalent. So now let's write this code. So here is the basic stack function which has already been written. Here we are taking. The uh, twenty size stack because the binary number can be big, so hence we have taken the size of the stack as twenty. We will be storing the integer elements in the stack. To initialize, we are setting up the top as minus one. For insertion of the element, we will first check for the overflow condition. If not, we will increment the top and we will insert an element at the updated top position. In the pop function. We are just checking if the stack is empty or not. If the stack is not empty, we are storing the top element in some x variable, and then decrementing the top index and returning this x. Pop function, uh, as in the pop function, we are returning the element. We are doing the same in the peep, but we are not deleting the element. In the peep function, peep is also known as the st stack pop function. So for doing this operation for the decimal to binary conversion, we can ask the user to input a number. So enter a decimal number. We are taking this decimal number in let's say some variable named as decimal, and then. We are calling the function binary to decimal by passing the parameter decimal number here. Since we have taken the decimal from your side, so we should declare the decimal number here. Let's write the function decimal to binary. In this decimal to binary function, an integer decimal is passed. Let's say this is d, just to make it short. And then, while d is greater than zero, you are going to find a remainder by r equals to d modulus two, and then you will push this in the stack. After this, you will reduce the number by dividing it by two. You need to take a stack. So call the function initialize. That will initialize the stack. And then, once uh, once the number has become zero, you will check if this stack is empty or not. So while this stack is not empty, you will pop a value. Let's say the pop value is taken in x, and you will print this one. Before printing, you just can you can just write the statement as decimal, 
equivalent of percentile D is so you have to print a decimal number and then it's equivalent binary. So this function does not return anything. So you will you will make its return type as void. You are using the remainder R and the X variable. So you will have to declare these two variables. There is an error, so let's uh, resolve this error. A semicolon is required here. I think there should be no more errors. Okay, there seems to be one more error. Let's resolve that as well. Okay, undefined reference to binary to decimal. It comes in the okay. Binary to decimal. This function is not binary uh, decimal to binary. Decimal to binary. Function. Pardon me for this mistake. Okay. Decimal to binary. Okay, there is a spelling mistake here. We have corrected that. So a decimal number can be input here. Let's say we are taking the number 13 as input, and we can see that 13 has a binary equivalent 1101. Let's take another example. Let's take the number as 15. So this should be all ones. You know it well. So I think that this function is working fine. You can take a big number also. Let's say the number is 153. So I think this also is correct, 128 plus uh, 15. Yes, this is also correct. So we have done with the, uh, we are done with the decimal to binary conversion. So what, you, what we are doing in the decimal to binary conversion, we are dividing the number with two and we're taking the modulus of the number with two as well. If you want to do the same with the decimal to octal conversion, in that case, you will have to use the divisor as two, uh, uh, divisor as eight in place of two. So you can make another function here, let's say. The function name is decimal to octal. So here also you will have to pass the decimal number. Just copy and paste all these things that we have written, what we have written here. And you just have to change the divisor. or the number with which you are taking the divisions. So the name of the function is decimal to octal and these are very, very small errors that you should actually correct. Here we have written decimal equivalent, it should be binary equivalent. Similarly, in the decimal to octal function, we have changed it to octal. So division will be taken with the eight and just other things remains the same. So let's run this in fast go, it will print the binary and then the octal equivalent. So if you take the example of 15 and if you divide this number with eight, then uh, it will be, uh, the remainder will be one. Remainder will be seven and quotient will be one. At the last it will be the uh, quotient will be zero and remainder will be one. So 17 is the equivalent octal equivalent of this given number. So I hope this is correct. You can take another example also just to verify if the code written is correct now. So 153, 231 is the octal equivalent, which is absolutely fine. Now uh, in case we have to convert the numbers to the hexadecimal, 
so we need to have uh, the information about something else as well for example if we are converting the number to the hexadecimal then we will have the incorporation of a b c d e f as well but in the integers if we are if we have the integers then those integers can only accommodate from 0 to 9 or if you are taking the remainders and the, if the remainder comes as 10 we will be have we will have to print 10 if the remainder comes as 11 we will have to print this 11 so that actually is not correct so let's take an example and then we will write the corrected part of the code so that it works for the hexadecimal as well so let's say my number is 123 so if i divide this number with 16 so it will be 16 7 are 112 so 11 is the remainder and 7 is the quotient and then if i divide this number again with the, uh, 16 so 7 will be remainder and 0 will be the quotient so 7 11 not we cannot print 7 11 in fact we should replace this 11 with b so our hexadecimal equivalent should be 7b so you need to store the, the number 11 as B or you can store the number 11 as such, but while printing, you can use the concept of uh, printing or converting this 11 to B. Similarly, 10 will be converted to A, 11 will be converted to B, 12 will be converted to C, 13 will be converted to D, 14 will be converted to E and 15 will be converted to F. So for doing so, we can think of taking uh, an additional array that stores all the character equivalents. For example, if I take the conversion, let's say CON is the conversion array and it has a size 16 and it is a character. So let's say it stores 0, 1, 2 and so on and so forth, 9 and then A, and then B, C, D, E, and F. So it is storing all the uh, character values from 0 to F. It has 16 different values. At 0 index, 0 character is stored. At 1 index, 1 character is stored. At 2 index, 2 character is stored, and so on and so forth. At 10 index, A is stored. At 11 index, B is stored. At 12 index, C is stored. At 13, D is stored. At 14, index E is stored. And at 15, index F is stored. So if you have to print uh, the number or while before printing, what you can do, you should you should not print this X. You should print the index value at X. For example, if I have a 0, so conversion at 0, index will give us 0. If you have 9, the conversion at 9 index will give us 9. But if it is 10, then it will give us A. If it is 11, it will give us B. So it is just that we have to change this statement or we have to replace this right X with right conversion X or at index X. And we have to take this additional array. So let's code this. So here's the code for the decimal to octal conversion or the decimal to binary conversion. We are just still copying and pasting it. And then we will write for decimal to hexadecimal. So before printing these, these values, we need to have the Additional array, let's say that array is the conversion array, C O N V R S I O N. And in this conversion array, we have 16 different elements of the character. It's not integer, sorry, it is a character array. So it will be storing the different values as 0, 
then run. Similarly, two, three, and so on and so forth to 16. So let's copy and paste, and we'll change these different values inside. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and after this, I'll be writing A, B, C, D, E and F. So this, this is the conversion array. And then before print, well, sorry, while printing, you have to print a character value, which is conversion at index x. Rest other things remains the same. Yes, we have to change this divisor also. It will change from 8 to 16. We will have to call this function also. So after calling the binary and octal, you can call the text arithmetic. Now let's test this for sample input. Let's say our input is 153. So for 153, the binary is one double zero double one double zero one, and then the octal is two three one, and hexadecimal equivalent will be ninety nine. You can verify with one of the number which contains A B C D E. So let's say the number is one twenty three. You can say that you can see that the hexadecimal equivalent being printed is seven B as we already have tested it on our whiteboard. Now. Uh, you can do the conversions with single function also. You do not require to have these many functions. So for doing it with the single function, you just need to pass a base also. Let's say here we have a base. And while dividing, you have to divide it with the base. The rest other things remains the same. So this will do the conversion or any base conversion. If you pass two here, it will, con it will convert to the binary. If you pass eight here, it will convert to the octal. If you pass 16 here, it will convert to the hexadecimal. If you pass any other number, it will convert the number to that base, but the base is limited to 16 because we have taken the conversion array size as 16. So this, is, this will be a generic function that will be converting from decimal to any base. Let's change this to Anyways, so uh, rather than passing uh, one parameter, you will have to pass two parameters here. So let's say in the last call, we are passing 16 here. So it will be converting the number to hexadecimal. So we will have to change this name of the function, decimal to any base. So the number is 123. You can see that it is printing 7B as a hexadecimal. Now, rather than passing the uh, base as 16, you just pass two here, pass eight here, and verify if this function is giving us the correct value of a octal equivalent. You can see that in the decimal to octal function, it, it, it printed 231. And decimal to any base function is also printed to 31. It means it is working fine. So I think uh, this conversion should be clear to you. We have actually applied the stack basics to find out this conversion. So in the next lecture, we will meet with some other algorithm on the stack and we will see some of the other application of the stack and we will code that as well. Thank you.